Which one of these is Sears Volts regulator? Yes. Which one? Yes. Top one, sir. The, the bottom. I hope you're kidding me. Look, it's the top one. Are you kidding me? This one's the series voltage regulator. Why? Do we call it that? Okay, that's good. Good answer. Stop. Just stop before you like screw it up. No, you're good. Good answer. Because what do we call the regulating element? Q1 is in series with the what? Oh, look at the redraw. Isn't it? Yes, sir. Don't forget what Q1's called. It's the regulating element. What else? Yes, that's its other name, the series pass transistor. Do not, do not, do not what? Series pass, two names. We discussed this already, the lesson. And before quizzes, you should know this by now. So for the ELOs, of course, during the beginning of all these lessons for the regulators, we need to be able to know what each component does, right? Yes. The characteristics that is. Regulation process, that's the error analysis. This redraw, that's from me to you to hopefully help some understand what's going on a little bit better. What we call R1 over there, what does it do in this circuit? What does R1 do here? That sounds like a plan. Isn't this the path of base current? Yeah. Third one base. Yeah. R2 and R3, what do we call those things? They're called the series dropping resistors. Don't forget what they're called. Or R sub S, same thing. And they're there to handle current parallel with each other, low ohmic value resistors to handle current, especially when there's an increase in lines. Eh? <coughs> handle that current, split it, dissipate, unwanted current. And guess what? Guess how much voltage drops across those two resistors? Not much at all. Those are combined 34 ohms, aren't they? Like 68 ohm resistors, parallel 34 ohms. How much voltage is going to drop? Next to nothing. So when it's time for the regulation process, I draw an arrow pointing to the right. Because you can prove it yourself. You should have when you did the lab. Go ahead and take your leads and place it across right here, R2 and R3. Wow, that doesn't move. It's like 15 millivolts. It is. That's why I do that, to make this a little easier, because hey, this is relatively constant. And even in this circuit, VCR1, look at that. Doesn't this establish the base voltage? For this one, yeah. And guess what? The base voltage is not going to do much of. We're going to have to change. Hola. CR1, that's our zener, isn't it? Yes, sir. And we know what it does by now, don't we? Yes, sir. Yes, V out. It helps set the output voltage. In this circuit, what's the formula? VCR1, what? Minus forward voltage. Minus the forward voltage. Voltage. Or. Hold on, I'm getting there. I'm getting to the or. You, you want to do this review? You know what? We could do that. You can be on camera, too. You want to do it? Oh, okay. All right. But I, uh, I like it. You're, you're thinking exactly what I am. But first, why do we subtract the forward voltage? It's a polarity thing, remember? Because the zener's in the circuit backwards. Sir. Negative is down here at the bottom, isn't it? Yes. Sure, sir. Look at the source. P type material is attached to the negative portion of my circuit. Holy crap, something's already wrong. It's backwards. This is the more positive part of the circuit. Oh, it's the cathode, so therefore you should be able to tell, ah, all right, it is in a circuit backwards. It's a polarity. Whenever you take a voltage drop across a component, it's going to have polarity. That is 
What I like to call V to 1 stuff. Yes, sir. Isn't that an NPN transistor? Yes, sir. Oh, series opposing. Got it. Subtract the forward voltage. Do not move. If we know this formula, and we do, 5 volts in or already assigned it. But there's another formula that's the same as that. Now, what is the other formula? The voltage of the zener uh -huh. minus the voltage of the base emitter. Does that make sense? Yeah. Isn't the zener voltage and VCR1 the same thing there, Williams? It is. Isn't the forward voltage and base emitter voltage the same thing? Yes, it is. Either way, it's the same thing. So for this one, 5 volts zener. Minus the 0. 0.6 gives me what kind of regulated voltage here? 4.4. That's what we're trying to maintain here, the constant, despite changes in line of load. That's the milio. R4, what do we call that thing in this circuit? What's R4? Leader. Now check this out. I have the series and the shunt on the same board here. R4 in this circuit is not the same job as R4 in the shunt, is it? No. No, sir. Don't screw it up. Pay attention when you're asked about components in these different circuits. You need to know what they're responsible for. If you don't, you probably won't get that question right if you're asked. R4 is the bleeder. Hey, no load conditions, I unplug it. That current that existed there, where's it go? It's got to go back into the circuit somewhere. It just doesn't disappear. Bleeder. That's what a bleeder resistor is for. C1, all these capacitors just think stability. Whenever you see something like unwanted transistor oscillation, shunts AC variations to ground, that's what all these capacitors do in every one of these circuits. And of course, we have to load itself, which represents whatever I'm plugging into the circuit, like the gyro model. That's the load. 